recording and then pass us off uh, to Nicole Jean-Baptiste with Bronx Rebirth, who's going to lead us through a greeting and grounding exercise. Thanks, Katie. Good night, everyone. I'm actually, for this grounding exercise, going to invite folks to turn their videos off. Um, the purpose of the grounding is to relax a little bit, um, to become more centered. And I'm personally like a little zoomed out and I think it's a, a nice way to do this. Okay, so happy moon day, happy Women's History Month. I want to ask folks to start by concentrating on your breathing. Breathe in and out. Deeply in, allowing your belly to expand and slowly out as it relaxes down. In and out. Continue breathing slow, just like this. You can slow your breathing even further by counting. Breathe in to the count of four. Hold to the count of three and breathe out to the count of five. Breathe in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, exhale, two, three, four, five. Breathe in again, hold, breathe out. Breathe in and out. Continue breathing for a count of four if you'd like. Holding for a count of three. And exhaling for a count of five. Letting your breath slow comfortably. What you're doing is practicing the relaxation skill of slowing your breathing. You can actually feel yourself calming down as you breathe slowly and calmly. This calm breathing helps you focus and be alert and relaxed. You can relax during the times of heavy activation. Continue to breathe slowly and every so often just notice your breathing and focus on allowing your breathing to slow down. Now concentrate on your muscles. You may find that you are holding tension in your muscles. Pay particular attention to your shoulders, your hands, and your jaw. Consciously lower your shoulders. Let your shoulders relax and allow the muscles to loosen. This act of relaxing your shoulders allows you to become calm because it places your body in a relaxed, easy position instead of a tense one. Notice your hands now and let your hands be open, loose, and relaxed. Let your arms rest by your sides letting go of all tension and just relaxing. You can relax during times of heavy activation. Focus on your jaw now. Allow your jaw to rest loosely. Allow your tongue to fall to the bottom of your mouth so your teeth are not touching. Let your mouth be loose and relaxed. Now mentally scan your body, noticing any areas that are tense. When you notice tension, concentrate on relaxing that area. Allow your muscles to give up the tension they have been holding. Allow your body to relax. You can relax during times of heavy activation. Focus on your breathing again. Just noticing it, relaxing into it. Count each breath again, if you like. Breathing into the count of four, holding for a count of three, and breathing out to the count of five. Now, 
Now concentrate on your thoughts. Imagine each affirmation that I follow and believe each one to be true. Become inspired by the legacies and work of the people whose names I will call. You may want to repeat each phrase and repeat each of the names or insert the name of someone you choose to recognize in this moment, silently in your mind. Relax, become inspired. I am calm, Ella Baker. I am relaxed, Tony K. Bambara. I know how to relax easily, Anna Julia Cooper. I relax whenever I want to, Ida B. Wells. I handle situations with ease, Marsha P. Johnson. I am prepared, Claudia Booker. I am focused. Andrea Jenkins. I am strong. I am confident. I am so deeply relaxed. Every time you are under pressure, remember to do these breathing exercises, these breathing exercises, and these body scans. You can calm your thoughts. You can relax anytime you need to. And this relaxation can help you to concentrate. It can help you to keep your brain functioning at its best. You can relax every day in every situation. Now I'm going to invite you to resume your video and thank you for partaking in this grounding exercise. Thank you so much, Nicole. That was amazing. I'm always working on the PowerPoint right up until this starts. So the grounding exercises, whew, good, uh, good for us all um, and important for me uh, coming into this space. Um, so thank you so much for leading us through that, Nicole. Um, I, uh, I'll, Hi, my name is Katie Season. I use she, her pronouns. Um, and it's my pleasure to welcome everyone tonight to this Movement Monday and this gathering in the Movement of Birth Liberation. Um, so is, uh, are people, is what people are seeing right now, my PowerPoint and then a, a screen with my thing? Okay, great. Um, so, uh, let me just move. Um, so, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for coming. Uh, let me guys, let, let's let me share a little bit about who the movement is and what we're uh, what we're doing tonight, uh, and kind of orient us in time and space, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I, before I do, are there any currently elected officials in the Zoom? Uh, well, if uh, that's great. If any elected officials join us and folks see them coming in, uh, please let me know and we'll uh, have them just introduce themselves and say hi. Uh, Farah, Assembly Member Forrest joined us last month, which was great to get an update from her um, to hear what's going on in Albany. Um, uh, so who am I? I'm Katie Season. I am a nurse, a midwife, a doula, and a general a reproductive justice activist and organizer. Um, and uh, I've been uh, working to kind of help birth workers uh, organize for the last couple of years in New York, particularly around the issues of racial health disparities. Um, and uh, largely informed by my experience uh, working as a NICU nurse in a segregated black hospital and being a whistleblower uh, for a lot of the dangerous conditions that I observed while working there that directly contribute to uh, New York's massive racial health disparities and in infant and maternal health outcomes. Um, so I would love to share with you all more about who I am and my backstory.
story and I've done that in uh, previous teachings and interviews. So if you're new to the movement and wanting to learn more about me, please check those out. Um, the movement to birth liberation is kind of, is like essentially a hashtag, an Instagram account and a database uh, that represent this collective network of reproductive justice activists. Um, mostly based in New York, uh, but we're growing and uh, hopefully we'll be able to have a presence other, you know, other, we will be wherever people are who are moving with us. Um, and uh, we are uh, kind of the two main ways that we organize is through a database that um, connects us by legislative districts. So we have a database that shows um, like everyone in the, you know, everybody who's come in the movement, who their state senator, state assembly person, Congress person, and city council person are. And so whenever there is a birth, reproductive justice, health justice issue that uh, comes up and there's pertinent legislation for it, we can see everybody who lives in the district of somebody who doesn't support it yet and get in touch with them and help uh, get them more involved in the process of advancing birth and reproductive justice um, legislation. And then our hope is that as we do that, we learn more about politics and we learn more about uh, the legislative process and are able to uh, generate legislation ourselves and essentially crowdsource the process of legislation writing to the folks who have, uh, you know, who have the um, the best insight into the needs of birthing people, which are birthing people and birth workers who work with them. Um, and so we're essentially organizing by legislative district to support a legislation that already exists. And as we do that, dreaming of new legislation that we can write um, to further advance uh, our cause and to address the needs that we see and know about as birth workers and birthing people. Um, and now I'm all mixed, all mixed up on my thing because I want to send into the chat the link to the, the database and just my Zoom is all everywhere. Um, hold on one second. So I, there we go. So I just put the link to the database in the chat. And if you are not in the database yet, if you don't recognize the form when you click on it, please, please, please fill it out and give us your information um, because there's a lot of stuff happening within the movement that you that never gets to like the main the main zooms or the main emails because it's all happening out in the districts and we don't uh we know to loop you in slash don't know to loop you in whether or not you're in the database so please uh uh if you aren't there yet fill that out and we look forward to helping uh integrate you to you know uh integrate you into whatever is currently happening into your district if not much is happening in your district maybe you're the person who starts it um and but most of the most of that happens by uh, through that form and the database. Um, and so, what are we doing tonight? Uh, this is um, Movement Monday. Is the first Monday of every month, and we are learning what to best, how to best use this time, and how to best uh, how to use this gathering best uh, for a, for us as a community and to. Uh, to further the movement. Um, uh, but for right now, it is a space where our organizational, uh, uh, the organizations who partner with us um, and who are working on the ground to address the needs of birthing people have a, have a space to share what they're up to and what's going on with them and ways that reproductive justice activists can get involved with on the ground work. Um, and so in a minute, I'll be throwing to uh, uh, folks from those organizations. And then we'll be talking about um, the policies that currently exist uh, both at a city, state, and national level that um, that further maternal health. And we'll be, I have an idea of how to make this interactive. Um, and we're gonna try it out tonight and see how it goes. <laughs> and uh, uh, if it doesn't go well, stick with us, come back April, cause we'll, we'll try something new. And if it goes well, awesome. See you in April because we'll know better how to do it. Um, so, uh, 
Um, so yeah, so that is generally what we are doing tonight. Last month we talked briefly about prefigurative politics. Um, and that is the idea that if we want to create a new world uh, with structures very different from our own, we need to use organizing methods that reflect the world we want, not the world that we have. Um, and that's why we start with grounding exercises. That's why we uh, always will have voices of people who are working on the ground and addressing the needs that, uh, you know, right now um, as a part to share. And also why we're always going to be talking about policy uh, because we want to not just, we want to focus on the current needs and build a better world for the future. Um, and last month I also talked briefly about pod, uh, like pods or potting up. And that's an idea I want to spend a couple more minutes chatting about tonight. Um, and Essentially, the idea of like potting up or forming pods is something I got from reading this book, Beyond Surviving Strategies from the Transformative Justice Movement. Um, and it is, uh, and there was a chapter in there talking about pods specifically in reference uh, for violence intervention. And essentially it's po posed as, um, you know, like if we want to abolish the police, then who are we going, like, who are we going to call instead if violence happens? Um, what can, you know, if, if somebody on my block is having a mental health crisis, do I know people on my block who I can call and together we can, uh, hope we've all taken bystander training so we have an idea of what to do and together as a community we can help and address the needs of the person in front of us instead of having to rely on an out, um, instead of having to call the cops. And I, uh, as I was reading this, I was like, ooh, this is super, super interesting and important for the purposes they're describing it for. Also, I wonder if this uh, translates to how we organize. Um, and essentially kind of my thought process is like, what we are dealing with in New York is, uh, and what the a lot of the policies we're gonna talk about the, the absence of them is state violence. Um, so like I worked in a state run segregated black hospital where a lot of people died of preventable causes because they wouldn't fund us appropriately to have the proper number of doctors and nurses. That's state violence. And so if the, in, in how we organize, like if we go to a Senator and ask them to properly fund a hospital, and they say no, like, what are we going, essentially, what are we going to do about it? Um, and so the, um, so that that's all to say what I really am hoping to put out into the community encourages thinking of like, who lives in my district, who lives close by me, um, that I can like, that I can start potting up with or forming a pod with uh, for real life needs because we live close together and it's a pandemic and like we can be helping each other out because if we live in the same district, we're probably also geographically close to one another. And also so that if our elected re representatives are, are not representing us well and are doing things that translate to state violence, I have a community of people. So it's not just me angry at my Senator, it's me and the folks I'm organizing with and the community I'm connected to that is uh, able to influence your Senator, your Senator one way or another and vote them out uh, if, they, if they continue to, uh, you know, support bad policies or not support good policies. Um, and I, so those are all things happening in my head that I wanted to share with folks who are organizing with me. Um, and I also want to shout out, uh, don't leave your friends behind, which is a book, uh, Chanel Portia has everyone who does ancient song doula training with, and essentially the TLDR is like, uh, like people with kids, it's important that they have, that they are able to be activists. And so like, you have to, you can't create child unfriendly activist spaces. I don't exactly know what that means for Zoom, um, but I do know that that means that people who have to like log off to to put their kids to bed in a couple of minutes, they need friends who aren't logging off in a couple of minutes to put their kids to bed, who can get in touch with them later and be like, oh yeah, yeah, Katie said this and the other thing, only this was really applicable to our district. Uh, how's, you know, how's Timmy doing? Um, 
and creating those relationships. Um, so yeah, so uh, every every Movement Monday, I'll share like a little bit more about our kind of what I'm learning about organizing and movement building um, so that we learn and grow as a community. Um, so yeah, so that's my like, welcome to the Movement of Birth Liberation and who we are. And uh, with all of that said, I will throw to our community partners um, to chat about the work that they are doing and uh, yeah, and update us on that. So I think Evelyn from Bronx Rebirth, if you wanna go first. Hi, um, I'm Evelyn. I have the honor and pleasure of um, supporting families in the Bronx along with Nicole Jean-Baptiste and Carmen Mojica and our crew. So I'm super excited around some of the stuff that we have going on. Currently, we are working on um, a collaboration that we have with Lincoln Hospital where we're gonna be supporting doulas and supporting births there as well as offering um, training and support for pregnant and recently delivered uh, birthing people. So there's that um, as part of our commitment at BX Rebirth to postpartum. We're also looking to open a daycare center because we know that affordable and helpful childcare is something that is really uh, has a specific and powerful impact on the lifestyle and the quality of life that parents have. And let's see what else we have. We got merch. So wait, I'm gonna show y'all. Yeah. So let's see, this is a hoodie. Can y'all see this? The Bronx Rebirths greatness. Ooh. So, you know, stand by for a post on all of our social media, letting you know where you can secure one. And of course, all of our, um, all of our funds, you know, we're really excited about the fact that we can say with real integrity that 100% of the money that we raise goes into running our project and making sure that we are offering and keeping our families um, connected and offering resources that make sense. So that's, I think, everything for now, unless Nicole has something to she wants to add. Nope, I don't have anything to add. Well, thank you so much, Evelyn, for that update. Um, if you please follow BX Rebirth on social media, uh, you they just started their Twitter account. So if you're on Twitter, uh, go ahead and follow them, retweet them. Um, they if you uh when you follow them on social media you'll see that they are in the middle of a campaign to raise money that is going towards just direct mutual aid needs uh diapers wipes formula families in the bronx who need like direct need with uh direct help with their basic needs um so please if you have money to give be giving uh that's a great place to send it is to that mutual aid fund um any amount of money is appreciated and a large amount of money are particularly welcome. And if you are somebody who has a large amount of money uh, or, or know someone who has large amounts yeah, of money, or know please someone. direct them our way and we will be happy to um, liberate them from the shackles of having too much money that you probably didn't even earn. So we are happy to support people in that way. <laughs> and also to continue to connect. So if anybody has anything specifically that they want to do, particularly in the Bronx, definitely um, let us know because we are all about community and about collaboration. It's, it's the only way. Um, great. Thank you so much, Evelyn. Uh, is uh, someone from Save a Rose here to give an update? I think I saw Bruce come in earlier. Um, yeah, I'm here. Hold on, I'm trying to get my stuff to work. Great. Oh, yeah, I don't know why my camera's not working, but can you guys hear me? Yeah. Oh, but yes, Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Bruce McIntyre. I'm the founder of the Save Rose Foundation. Nice to meet everybody. Um, it's lovely to see this uh this movement just grow each month it's a beautiful thing to see um so 
last month for us was uh, very good. Um, we had a few projects, um, uh, a few webinars that we hosted. Uh, Katie was a part of that. Thank you. And um, we actually got a, a bunch of uh, really good feedback from that and some new opportunities um, opened up for us as well. Um, I've actually been um, speaking, you know, pretty much every week with like news media outlets and, um, you know, different journalists and, and blogs, um, radio personnel. Um, I'm, I'm currently in the networks of um, getting something done with, with Google in the UK, um, which is, which is a, a pretty big deal. Um, I'm pretty excited about that. And um, I actually found out that I'm going to be teaching a racial bias class at Harvard with Dr. Dale Shaw. Um, we're getting, you know, that in the works. I'm <laughs> super excited about that. Um, I may also be speaking at the um, the white coat ceremony as well. Um, fingers crossed. And yeah, that's really all we, we, we've got going on right now um, in the current moment. Uh, just a lot of stuff. We're getting a lot of inquiries in and knocking them out and getting everything done and getting the word across. So thank you guys for all of your support. And um, thank you for what you do as well, because, you know, I, I couldn't do this without y'all. And, um, you know, the, the work that all of you do truly inspired me. So thank you. Great, Bruce, thank you so much. So, so much for that update for all of your the hard work you and Save Rose are doing. Um, the Save Rose had three different events this month. Uh, they were great. Uh, I think the recordings when the when the recordings of those events they're on YouTube actually. They're up. Yeah, they're up all of them. So if you just go on Save Rose, they'll they'll pop up. So, um, and we will make sure we get the links for those events in the follow up. So if you miss them, uh, go ahead, please uh, keep an eye out for those links in the follow up from this, uh, from this event, and check them out um, to learn more about what Save a Rose is doing. And then I'll just, I'm gonna keep reminding folks about the form. Um, but for Save a Rose and I, uh, long term are working on legislation, uh, working on writing legislation. And the the writing process is going to be what we hope the writing process is the longest process because once we have a bill ready to go, uh, we'll have a very developed network of activists who are ready uh, to help get it a bunch of support on that bill and get it passed. Um, so if you are wanting to get involved, um, kind of like essentially long term be able to be a support for save a rose getting involved in policy work now uh, developing a relationship with your elected officials now is uh the a great way to st start uh doing laying the groundwork so that when we do have legislation ready to go we're able to pass it quickly um is anyone from uh birth from the earth here new newbie or singy no, um, Nubia is probably out. She, I think she was, uh, I think she had a birth. Okay. Today. Cool. Well, uh, do you know, does anyone know if Birth from the Earth has anything going on this month? We'll check in with them and make sure, uh, a link goes out. Check their IG page for sure. And then, um, Bruce is doing something cool there that you hadn't mentioned in all of your. Oh, yes. Where, um, Nubia's husband and I, Ninja, um, mm -hmm. are doing Fatherhood Fridays. Um, there as well. Every fourth Friday of the month, um, we gather up either on Zoom or you guys can, or the fellows can come to uh, to Earth Grounds. And it's really where, you know, men can um, get in tune with their children and be in sync with their children and families and, um, you know, learn from other men. And, and uh, it's really just a support group for men, for fathers. Um, so we're doing that every fourth Friday of the month over at Earth Grounds in Yonkers. So excited about that as well. That's awesome. Thanks, Bruce. Uh, so, Myla, shall I throw to you with uh, the birthing place? Sure, sure. Um, I also want to give a nod to um, uh, another cool thing I've heard about over at Earth Grounds with um, Moon Mondays, um, just the, the different things they're incorporating into um, the offerings over there in that wonderful space. So, um, in regard to Birth from the Earth, 
I'm, I'm getting texts from a client in pretty active labor, um, but it's not time to go quite yet. <laughs> um, but um, in, in regard for to the birthing place, um, you know, really, uh, there's a lot of the advocacy work going on to um, um, shift things into the direction we want with getting more midwife led birth centers throughout the state and um, Bruce was on a strategy call just earlier this week um, because some cool things happened. There was some movement. Um, basically, um, the bill um, passed out of committee without discussion into the next stage, except without the amendments that we had all worked really carefully to just adapt a couple key things that will make it better. Um, yet, uh, we're hopeful that because it um, passed without any um, discussion, it was unanimous, and because there was some prior knowledge about the bill, um, that there's still room to to just discuss further with all the stakeholders and more of the folks working to open birth centers about um, just like how to make sure that that language is um, where we want it. <laughs> so it's kind of similar um, to last time, but also really awesome. And um, one of the couple of strategies we're working on is, you know, number one, of course, we want to um, continue to push on the executive side, the petition, the petition, the petition. There's been a recent update to the petition. So you can read that um, if, um, I'm, I imagine Katie will drop the link in the chat, pretty please. Um, and again, if you haven't signed it, sign it, have your mom sign it, your sister, your cousin, just have at least a couple people sign it this week, pretty please, and um, share it somewhere because um, the goal is still to put pressure on Cuomo to, um, you know, and the executive branch to do what they're capable of doing, which is to amend um, their, their executive order that, uh, that, that wants to diversify and increase birthing options outside of the hospital, but meanwhile hasn't followed through with the action to make it possible. And so we're, we're offering them this action. And we still have the, um, the bill uh, journey, which, you know, we, we may have to do really like a little, a little slow, but very carefully, or um, depending on if we get um, the right people involved on like um, a round table, Katie and I were discussing, we can basically uh, really define the intention of the, the bill by the author of the bill and get the supporters to really understand what its intention is. So even without that like fine tuned language fix that we could still um, really put all of our weight behind it. But before we do that, we just want to make sure to have like a really uh, good thorough discussion with a lot of the, the folks, the stakeholders, because remembering that this, this bill is not about the people who make the laws, it's about all the birthing people in New York who can benefit from this being precisely the way it needs to be. So we may need to just, um, um, you know, hold off a little bit longer before throwing our full weight behind it. But in the meantime, keep signing that petition. Um, and um, uh, probably by the end of this visit, um, I'll put a date um, in the chat. I'm just coordinating with a couple more people on um, offering a, a date and time for a birth center teach-in so that folks can really understand, of course, you know, the history of what's happening here in New York and where we want to go and also like where things stand and really just kind of understand the nitty gritty behind where we're at so that when we want to kind of, um, um, you know, strap our boots and get ready to really, um, you know, push this through that folks already really fully understand it and can communicate with their legislation, their legislators and their elected officials about like, you know, just just we the people have the ability to um, um, have have them listen to us and just making sure that we know what we're talking about too. <laughs> okay, so um, that's pretty much it. On a side note, um, um, uh, another organization that I'm working with, Uptown Village Cooperative, um, and a couple other wonderful um, collaborators here um, are working on some some progressive initiatives um, 
for birthing people, um, one of which is going to be um, a mentorship program with um, CC um, Doula Services and um, um, Bronx Rebirth and Inatus and Uptown Village and Ashe Birthing Services. And so we're just collaborating to really put together more um, support for birth workers of color. And so stay tuned for that as well. Great. Thank you so much, Myla, for that update. Um, I'll just, for folks who haven't been to the last Movement Mondays, uh, the birthing place is uh, wants wants to be a birth center in the Bronx and is struggling to become one because New York has incredibly restrictive laws right now um, about what birth centers have to do to be able to exist. So California, Texas, other large populous states have 40 plus birth centers. New York has less than three. Um, and that's because our laws are really bad. Uh, so Myla has been working for almost a year now to try and fit, to get a new law passed that would make it much easier and get rid of a lot of the unnecessary barriers uh, that birth centers currently have to jump over to open up. And like where we are today is essentially uh, the, as Myla mentioned, like the, ex the wording of the bill isn't exactly what the birth center folks had come together and wanted. And we're essentially trying to understand, is this a clerical, clerical error? And like essentially somebody submitted the wrong bill version and we just need to go and update that wording. Or was this a strategic decision uh, because changing the wording would make the bill harder to pass or like, you know, we want to make sure we understand why it wasn't what the uh, birth center folks asked for. And then once we understand why it isn't, go from there. So maybe next month we'll be saying it was just a clerical error and it's exactly the language we need now. All go, let's get everybody on this bill and pass it. But we're still, that what Milo says, like we're just holding off because we still need a little bit of time to uh, figure out the issue with the wording and um, if it wasn't a clerical error and there's some disagreement with what the wording of the bill may be, uh, then we will, what we'll need is folks to get in touch with um, more, more legislators than who we've currently talked to. So up till now, we've mostly been working with Assembly Member Gottfried, who's the chair of the Assembly Health Committee. Um, but he's not the only person who can make and write laws in the state of New York. And so uh, if we're, if he had, if we have a disagreement with his office, uh, an option is to get in touch with other people on the health committee, other people on the women's issues committee, explain to them what's going on um, and see what we can do about uh, further advancing our own interests. And so how, again, how do I know if you live in the district of somebody on a women's issue committee or uh, somebody on the health committee, the database. So make sure you fill out that form if you haven't yet. You mind if I also just add really quickly, um, it, it just because um, Gottfried's office has been quite collaborative with us, you know, we have reason to believe that it could have just been a timing thing when we really like uh, precisely put that last little, you know, tweak to how we wanted it. It was um, submitted before that tweak came in. And so there could have just been like some error in that way. But again, you know, because, um, because um, you know, like Katie said, uh, there can be any reason and so we just want to be um, prepared for whatever and um, you know um, but ultimately quite hopeful. Uh, great so thank you so much Myla and we will hope but well, soon we'll be having more teach-ins to to get uh, for folks who are interested in going deeper on that issue so please keep your eyes out for that. Um, awesome. Uh, so now we let me reshare my screen um, and move things around on my computer. So uh, if you work with a group that is similar to Bronx Rebirth, The Birthing Place and Save a Rose, um, and you would like to be a part of this community and have a chance to make announcements and stuff, we would love to have you. Uh, just reach out, say hi to me. We will chat throughout the month and get you on the schedule for meetings going forward. Um, so 
Uh, okay, so now we're going to get into the policy portion of the night. And this is where instead of doing like some like policy and then something interactive, I'm going to try and make the whole thing kind of interactive. So we'll, we're going to, we're going to try, we're going to go with it, see what happens, uh, do something different next, next week if it doesn't work out well. But the, the, what I'd like for us to do first, before we start talking about policy is have everyone look up your elected officials. So that way as Senator, like as names get thrown around, if you are their constituent, you're going to go, Oh, Hey, that's me. <laughs> oh, I live in that district. Um, and uh yeah so if you live in new york city the easiest way to find out who your representatives are is to go to mygovnyc.org and put your address in so one nine uh, one here we go we just put in some numbers in queens and it will um give us our city state and federal representatives for whatever address you put in um, so, uh, if somebody hasn't already, you can put mygovnyc.org in the chat. And folks, um, uh, if you don't know who off the top of your head, who your city council person is, your state assembly member, your state senator, and your federal representative, and you live in New York City, you're going to go to this website to put in your address and look them all up. If you are in outside of the five boroughs of New York City, then um, you're going to use Google. And if you Google find my New York State Senator, uh, it this will be one of the first pages that comes up is nysenate.gov slash find my senator. And same, uh, same thing where you just put your address in and it will give you um, who your state senator is. And then if you Google find my uh, find my New York State Assembly member, again, the New York State Assembly.gov will have a place where you put in your address and it says who they are. So for just for like, just for reference, um, and to help us contextualize like your congressperson, your federal congressperson is who represents your con congressional district in Washington, DC about federal issues that affect the whole nation. Your state senator and your state assembly person are essentially analogous to your, to like Gillibrand and Schumer and your congressional representative, but on the state level going to Albany. So your state senator is who represents you on any statewide issue, like the state budget that passes, how much money are we going to put into Medicaid this year? Uh, your state senator is who votes on that. So any New York uh, issue that's specific to New York, um, you need to, it is your state assembly person or your state senator who you would call, not your federal Congress person. That is for national or federal issues. Um, and then, and outside of New York, most states have two, ha like, uh, have a Senate and an assembly. Some states, the assembly is called like the House of Commons or something similar. Um, so, uh, so if you don't live in New York, uh, check Wikipedia to see if you have an assembly or a House of Commons or just, you know, essentially Google like, uh, find my representatives and then your state or your address. And that is going to tell you who represents uh, your area at your state's capital. Um, and so uh, Movement to Birth Liberation is very focused on state policy, mostly because I was a nurse at a state-run hospital. And so to fix the issues at the state-run hospital, uh, I needed to learn to engage with state government. Um, and also like, I, also, yeah. Um, so we're really like learning and realizing the potential of organizing at the state level, uh, particularly in a state like New York that is very wealthy and like we could raise the taxes to fund whatever program we wanted because we have all that money in the state. We just need people in Albany who are willing to do that. 
Um, and then at the city level, this is who represents, if you live in New York City, this is who represents you at City Hall for any city related issues. So like the police, um, the police is a city issue. The schools are like a hybrid city state issue. Um, and so I'm taking the time to talk through like these three layers of government because it's really important for us to understand who represents us at each level so that as we as we come across problems as a birthing community we essentially we know where to go oh we have we're having an issue with city hospitals that's going to be my city council person who i need to get in touch with oh we're having a problem with like the suny system the state university system okay that's going to be my state senator and my state assembly member that i get in touch with oh, there's a national bill that we need our folks in Washington to pass. That is my federal co Congress person who I'm gonna get in touch with. Um, so uh, I'm a Ambry Samuels, Zinnerman, Brisport, Jeffries constituent. Uh, those are my city council person, state senator, or assembly person, senator, and uh, congressional rep. Um, so if you are looking your reps up and you see that you are in uh, any of those districts, let me know. Send me, uh, put it in the chat and be like, oh, I, I also live in uh, Am uh, CM Amphrey Samuels district. And cool, we need, uh, we'll pot up with each other and you'll be my team when I need to get in touch with uh, my elected representatives about oh, whatever issue. Um, oh, shoot. So, uh, and all of that said, we're... Uh, I'm going to ask if anyone has questions or needs help in a minute, but first I want to make sure Sam gets a time to chat before she tucks her kids in um, about the first state policy issue that we're going to talk about tonight, and that is the Invest in Our New York campaign. So Invest in Our New York is the new hashtag that is uh, the umbrella hashtag for uh, all of the state legislation that is coming out right now that would tax rich people. Um, and Sam has had some great luck getting her, uh, Sam's rep does not currently su uh, support taxing the rich and she's had some great luck uh, lobbying him. So I wanted her to share her experiences with the group. Go ahead, Sam. Hi everybody, um, thank you so much. Um, I am, currently engaging pretty regularly with um, my state senator and I have been lucky to do so I you know at first I started out just kind of calling his office a lot and just talking to whoever answered the phone and you know asking them how they're doing and like <laughs> um, and talking to them about that I'm actually new to um, my district which is district 30 if anybody's a district 30 person in Queens um you know and just talking to them about the things that are important to me um i started following my senator on twitter and he's not on instagram but like just wherever i could find him and i also put um one of those google notifications so i get news about what he's up to um so yeah so i can just kind of keep track about what he's doing and um and then i also periodically send him emails and eventually what happened was is he called me which totally blew my mind um and we we talked for like half an hour and i told him all about what we're doing and all about um you know what what we're concerned about with um you know with birth liberation and just with inequities in birth in new york and why it's important to him and why it's important to me as one of his constituents. And um, yeah, and then last week there was a meeting and I found that I was not on, but one a person in my pod in my district was on and was able to report back to me, which is really great when we're talking about the that book, Don't Leave Your Friends Behind. Um, one of the things that's really important as a parent is to be partnered with people, like as Katie said, who can show up when I can't, or like as birth workers, right? Like we're at a birth. Milo's got to go to a birth at some point today, right? So it's like, who's going to report back to her and let, fill her in on the deets? Um, anyway, so I heard through, you know, through my pod, through my grapevine that um, 
that our senator still, even though he told me when we spoke last that he was supportive, still has not signed. So I sent him an email that said, you know, basically like, I was really bummed to hear that it's like that we talked in December, you know, and here we are like rolling into March and I still have not seen that you have, you know, I was really sad to find out last night that you hadn't signed yet. So like, what's the deal? Also notice like you are succeeding in these other areas and also really, really, really feel so good that you connect with me and I feel your allyship and I know you're listening to what I'm saying. So what are we going to do? What's our next step? And he actually wrote me back already, um, which is also really great. And then I didn't know what to do. <laughs> Cause I was like, Oh my God, he wrote me back again. Um, so then I reached out to Katie and was like, what do I do next? Do I set something up? Do I write him back again? So, you know, so like I, really wanting to share that like, you know, I, I really believe that this is a community effort. It has to be a community effort. Um, we are all showing up here perfectly imperfect and where we are and, and through that and through each other, we're able to support each other in doing that. Um, another thing that I do that I'll just share quickly is I BCC um, people in my pod on the things I send out. Anybody that really I think could be interested, I'll like CC or BCC um, partially to like hold myself accountable, partially to share my template of like, like what I wrote so that you could then take it and like chop it up and make it yours. Um, as far as I'm concerned, like we all got to be sharing what we're saying because we all have different ways. And one of the big things that I was so stuck on for so long is like, how the heck do I write this? You know, and what does it need to look like? And, um, anyway, so yeah, so community and, um, and let's do it. <laughs> Did I touch on everything? <laughs> okay. Um, awesome. Thank you so much for sharing, Sam. Uh, so Sam is in Senator Adavo's district. Am I saying that right? Um, out in Queens. So if, if you were, uh, have looked up your state Senator and you see that you are in that district, uh, reach out to Sam and say, hi, let us know, fill out the form. Um, so we can loop you into that district effort. And essentially, uh, the email back from Senator Adavo was like, I'd like to sign on to these bills, but I, you know, still need to look through them and make sure there aren't any other, you know, make sure I don't have questions or concerns. And so my suggestion to Sam is like, for now, let's write back and be like, please let us know what your questions and concerns are and we'll help address you like help you address them. Uh, so we'll, we'll either expect to hear what your concerns are or to see that you're a co sponsor. Um, and then we'll be working to try and build coalition with other uh, health justice, education justice, uh, justice, justice groups, like lots of uh, activist groups in New York are working together on invest in our New York, because none of us can do any of the things that we need if we're not going to raise taxes and if we can't get more money into the state budget. Um, so kind of our next step is we're going to keep the pressure on Senator Adabo, have him know that there are constituents in his district that want his support on this, and then start building coalitions with other groups to build that pressure. And so either we'll get his support or we'll get a new senator in a couple of years, hopefully. Um, and uh, yeah, so Sam, thank you so much for sharing. Um, any other thoughts or questions, like thoughts to, or things to share while you're here? Or while we're on this, we're good. Uh, so I'll pause now because that was my time. My uh, I knew Sam needed to tuck her kids in, uh, but I but I do want to see if anyone had questions or trouble looking up their senators or anything I've said so far or that folks have said so far that you want clarifications or concerns. Yeah, Mima, go ahead. Um, thanks. So I'm wondering the you had shared a Google Doc, the Invest in Our New York Google Doc, a while back that had a listing of um, both uh, state senators and assembly members, and I was looking at that this morning, um, and I wondered how up to date it was. I called both Senator Parker and uh, Assembly Member Carroll's offices, and there was a helpful script in there that I was able to adapt. But then you know, and I cited to them, you've signed on to seven, you've signed on to three. And then I wondered, oh, how up to date is that? Is that being constantly updated or? Uh, yes, so great question. It is 
completely out of date. So the if you have seen the equity for downstate tax the rich tracker, that is defunct now because all of the bills that we were tracking were from the 2019-2020 legislative session. Don't Mima, don't worry at all because what the like what was important that like people who who answered the phone aren't going to remember the bill numbers off the top of their head. They're going to remember that someone's calling to ask them to tax the rich. So like they'll 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 connect the dots of like, oh, they must not realize those were the old bill numbers. What are the tax the rich bills? Um, and there are a lot of people in Parker's district in our database. So hopefully you won't be the only person reaching out uh, on this issue and more folks will be uh, you know, coming in soon to, uh, to share the up-to-date bill numbers. Yeah, so this is something that like I'm, I only, you know, I only really, I resigned from my job as a nurse to start focusing on politics since the spring of 2019. So this is the first time I've gone through a new legislative season and I'm like, oh, right, all of the bills change. Um, so the when, when we vote in a new Congress and when we vote in new state representatives every two years, it kind of like uh, refreshes the refreshes and resets everything. So uh, last year we had 14 bills that tax the rich in different ways that together would contribute uh, $35 billion extra to the state budget. This year, they've reformulated a lot of those bills. And so now there's six bills that together would raise $50 billion if they were all to pass um, into, the state, uh, into the state budget. So, um, so uh, February was our first Invest in Our New York Working Group. Um, and essentially what we did there is just like walk people through the website, help people find out their uh, who their senator was, if their senator uh, had been supportive of the old bills. This month, when we meet as a working group, essentially what we're going to do is make a, a new tracker for this set of six bills. So you'll be able to look up, uh, you, you know, you'll essentially you'll have the six bills across the 63 state senators on a on a line and you'll be able to look across and see which bills your state senator has and hasn't supported. Um, so that's to say, if you are interested in this, please come to our Invest in Our New York working group because that's a lot of man hours. That's easy to do if a bunch of us are in the Zoom and takes forever if there's only one or two of us. Um, and uh, um, yeah, and to learn to find essentially if you miss the working group and and or uh in the meantime if you go to invest in our new york dot org uh this website um has a great tools that will help you um you can sign the petition it can, will like automatically send tweets i think to your uh representatives and then if you zoom, uh scroll down you'll see here it shows invest in our New York Act and it shows you the six different laws that are actually uh, like a part of the act. Um, and then if you, oh, let's see, if you, oh no, my screen isn't wide enough. If you zoom to the side here, if you use these dots, um, you uh, can see each of the bills. And so you open it up to look at what the bill is and uh, how you see whether or not your state senator supports a bill is you open it up. And if your state senator is the sponsor of the bill, then they definitely support it because either they wrote it themselves or they worked closely with the activists who did uh, to put that legislation forward. So if you are uh, right now, we are looking at um, a a bill that would just raise the progressive income tax. So it would just raise taxes on people who are making more than $300,000 per year. And thank you, I think people who do make more than $300,000 a year could probably chip in a little bit more for taxes. Um, and so I clicked on the link uh, on this website, Invest in Our New York, to get to the Senate version of that bill. 
And when I get here, one of the first things I do is make sure I'm looking at the right bill um, that it's the for the correct legislative session. So right here it says 2021-2022. Um, so I know I'm looking at the right year sponsored by Senator Jackson. So if you are a constituent of Senator Jackson, I think Myla is. Uh, who? Any other Jackson constituents in the Zoom? Wave, say hi. Um, so if he's your senator, you can just say thank you so much for sponsoring this bill to, to tax the rich. I'll be telling my friends in other districts that their state senators should support it too. And then to see who else supports the bill, you just go down on the page and you look to see who are the co-sponsors and is there a tab that shows the additional co-sponsors. So this bill we can see actually has quite a lot of support already. Um, I'm a constituent of Senator Brisport. Let's see if he's here, right here, beautiful. So I can just say, Thank you, Senator Brisport, for supporting this bill. Um, and then if your person is not on this bill, so Senator, uh, before we were talking with Sam, who's a constituent of Senator Adabo, and we look around, we're looking, we're looking, and there's no Senator Adabo here. So we know we still need his support on this bill. So this is um, one of the main kind of skills I wanted folks to kind of see and take with them uh, from Movement Monday is like, if I see my friend, uh, you know, if I see a friend tweeting like pass bill S something, 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 how do I know what, essentially, how do I know if I, if I should thank my person for supporting it or ask them to support it? Um, well, you look the bill up, make sure you're looking at the right bill by checking the date and then seeing here if they're a co-sponsor. Um, essentially, co-sponsorship is a way to vote yes in advance on a bill. So if they're here on as a co-sponsor, they're definitely going to vote on it when it comes to the floor because they already put their name on it. Um, and by asking for people, like getting as many co-sponsors as possible, we help elevate the bill in like the social conscientiousness, make sure that they know that it's important. And if uh, there are 63 state senators in New York, so anytime we get 32 or mo more co-sponsors on a bill, we it will for sure pass because there are more co-sponsors than there are votes we need. Um, so uh, yeah, so I'll, uh, so thank you so Mima, thank you so much for that question. Other questions about invest in our New York or uh, I still can't find my state senator or anything like that. Awesome. All right. Um, so I, let's see. So for action steps. Um, okay. So if you want to learn more about uh, essentially why we need to tax the rich and why this is a reproductive justice and maternal health issue, um, please, uh, I'll let me drop. Oh, goodness. Um, I'll put this link in the uh -huh. chat. Um, but I did an interview last year with Dominique Remy, who's working on the Canary Film Project, which is a film about uh, Black maternal mortality. Um, and it's like a full hour on how the state budget has negatively impacted infant and maternal health and why we need to invest in invest in our New York. Um, so if you're like, I don't really know what to say as a, like, I want to be as a doula for maternal health tax the rich, but I'm not exactly sure what the arguments should be. Check out this interview. It will lay things out super clearly. Um, you know, when Sam wrote the email to Senator Adabo, uh, she's been helping me and working, you know, she's been helping me and, uh, and coming to teachings I've been doing for two years now. Um, so I was a really low energy month and didn't have the time or capacity to write scripts or write sample emails. But Sam came up with a great one herself because she knows the issues well. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, and I think like the more, like pretty much anytime asks me for a script, I say back to them, can I help you write a script? Can I give you feedback on a script that you write? Because generally as a movement, the more of us who feel comfortable writing scripts and like 
uh, connecting the dots between bigger issues and the things we actually say to the politicians, um, the the bigger the greater our capacity is going to be involving other people and moving legislation. Um, cool. So that is so we're going all sorts of. Uh, oh, I was going to do city, state, the national, but I knew Sam needed to go first. So now we're going to go back to city issues uh, and talk for a second about um, the city council race and um, kind of the city council race, uh, how the movement to birth liberation interacts with candidates. And I know we have some candidates in the Zoom, uh, so we'll have them introduce themselves and learn more about their candidacies um, and what they are doing. So uh, this is an Instagram post I put together and put up on the main Movement to Birth Liberation IG page. And it essentially says like the Movement to Birth Liberation, we're a grassroots network, uh, like a non-hierarchical grassroots network of activists. So like we can't really give endorsements to candidates because there's no like central authority figure to make the decision of who that endorsement should go to. Um, but what we can do is as we are, uh, as we get to know candidates and as we familiarize ourselves with the issues is share what we know and share the information that we've learned with the wider community so folks can make decisions for themselves uh, as to uh, who they should support or if they should support somebody in their campaigns. Um, so that's all to so with the city council races like i'm not i don't have a very developed um like i don't and i don't know people with a very developed maternal health uh agenda for city level issues um and so really as candidates have reached out to us for advice on maternal health issues we're essentially like cool yeah let's uh here's what we know and we can share with you and how we think that would work well at city issues and we'll let people in our network know that you asked us for advice and similarly if uh candidates come to movement monday and they sit through an hour <laughs> plus of us chatting and hearing from our community uh, i think it's totally worth having them introduce themselves and folks make for their own decision um whether they want to get more involved um and i guess so the next big race coming up in, if you live in New York City, is the city level races. And that is June 22nd this summer. And if you live in New York City, the primaries that happen in the summer are usually like the most important election because most districts are so firmly democratic that whoever wins the primary in the summer is going to go on to win the the election in uh, November. So it's very unlikely that a Republican mayoral candidate would win in New York City. So the real contest is this summer who wins the the Democratic primary for that nomination. Um, so I like I said, I don't pay a, a, a as nearly as much attention to city politics as I do to state. Um, but what something like super foundational to the movement to birth liberation and to kind of the policies that we're working towards is that healthcare is a human right. And in New York, we don't have to, that doesn't need to just be rhetoric because we are one co-sponsor short of being able to pass the New York Health Act, which would create a state level Medicare for all program of universal guaranteed health insurance for every New Yorker. Um, so as far as like endorsements, uh, endorsements versus information, uh, the movement isn't gonna endorse any mayoral candidate, but we will let you know uh, who agrees with us that healthcare is a human right and wants to see the New York Health Act pass. And right now there are only two mayoral candidates who are openly supportive of the New York Health Act. And that is um, Diane, Mora uh, Diane Morales and Carlos uh, Menchaca. So uh, you'll see the little thank you things at the very back of the Instagram post. And that's essentially to say like, we're not gonna tell you who to vote for, but we will thank the people who support policies who, that we are very supportive of and let our network know if you wanna vote for a mayoral candidate who thinks healthcare is a human right, it's gonna be one of these two people um, for right now. And obviously if you are connected with mayoral candidate campaigns, uh, that haven't publicly come out to the New York Health Act, as soon as they do, we will make them a fun sticker. Um, 
And on that note, uh, so that's kind of where, how we approach candidates is uh, just sharing information. And so for the candidates who've joined us tonight, I'd love to throw to you um, uh, to introduce yourselves, uh, tell us a little bit about your campaign and how people can get more involved if they if they want to. Um, I see uh, Ms. Hanif here, if you wanna go, go ahead. Sure. Hi everyone, I am just, wow. The, the knowledge in this space, I am, I'm absolutely grateful that we spent an hour and 15 minutes just learning um, and really, really appreciate the grounding um, portion of tonight as well because as a candidate, I just have not had time to, to, uh, to do any sort of uh, meditation and, and really reflective uh, deep breath. So I really, really appreciate this space. And I just honor everybody who is a part of this movement and really holding space for all of us um, to join and collaborating together. Hi, everybody. I'm Shahana Hanif. And thank you, Mima, um, for inviting me this evening. Again, I'm just like super blown away and energized. I came here to learn um, and get plugged in however I can to collaborate on issues pertaining to birth justice and medical disparities um, that violently target and harm Black communities. It's, it's been really great to hear from Evelyn, Bruce, Myla. Um, thank you for all the work you're doing. Um, I'm running for city council in Brooklyn's 39th district. And like Katie was saying, the city council can help to radically shift um, and expand our access to reproductive health care uh, in the city. I um, am rooted in advocating for more funding and investment of our city's public health care system and allocate more money um, from the city council budget to reproductive community health centers, the Department of Mental of, of health and mental hygiene and the health and hospitals corporation to adequately support expectant parents. Expanding access to sexual and reproductive health care also means ensuring that care is culturally informed and language accessible. I was super happy to sign on to candidate Trisha Shimamura's um, citywide plan to address maternal mortality in New York City. I'm running uh, to become the first South Asian and first Muslim woman elected to the city council and the first woman to lead District 39. I'm running to create uh, an anti-racist feminist city that provides efficient and thoughtful care to the communities in every corner of the 39th district and New York City. And the 39th includes Kensington, where I was born and raised, includes Windsor Terrace, um, Park Slope, Carroll Gardens, Cobble Hill, Gowanus, the Columbia Waterfront, a little sliver of um, Borough Park. I'm personally impacted by our city's healthcare system. At 17, I was diagnosed with lupus, a chronic illness that catalyzed my lifelong commitment to healthcare advocacy. As a disabled teenager, I witnessed our city's nebulous healthcare system and how families with limited English proficiency like mine are forced to demand transparent care. My doctor said um, lupus wouldn't kill me, um, but that if I wanted to fight, I would need tremendous grit. And 13 years later, I'm running to transform the city into one that provides adequate healthcare, mental health care services, and invaluable language access. I'm 100% invested in getting our city to pass the New York Health Act. I'm running, um, and I'll wrap up here, I'm running to prioritize women, all women. I'm tired of seeing us bear the brunt of this pandemic. We need leaders who will prioritize a care-based economy, one that recognizes women's paid and unpaid labor. Um, and we need to expand free infant and toddler care. I'm just inspired to learn about all the organizations because I think the city council is also an apparatus to support grassroots groups with discretionary funding or to partner up and host town halls together. This is all really possible. We really need to deepen the ways we imagine um, birth justice in partnership with our elected officials. 
Um, and we need to keep all women safe in their homes. A, a, a ton of my work has been rooted in caring for survivors of domestic violence um, and supporting uh, religious and culturally sensitive, um, uh, the creation of religio-cultural shelters like Asia in Brooklyn near my district. And I plan to establish a citywide survivors fund and self-defense workshops for Muslim women who need better options. Um, I would love to chat more uh, with you all one-on-one. Um, -on -one. um, you can learn more about me at shahanafrombk.com and on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, uh, my handle is shahanafrombk. And I will put in some links. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so, so much for coming, for introducing yourself, your candidate. I'm excited. You got me all juiced as you're talking. <laughs> um, it, quick, Thank you. Am I right that it's, if your current city council person is CM Lander? Is That's that right. It's, it's currently Brad Lander. Yep. Yeah. So if you, if when you looked up your city council person, you saw it was Brad Lander, this is your district. This could be your city council person. Woo! Um, there are, uh, so uh, go yeah, follow through, get involved. And Nima, I know, is uh, involved in the campaign as well. So she may be able to help onboard folks. Am I speaking out of turn by saying that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she, got, she got missing a here. <laughs> I see it, her as like a, a go between. Um, uh, Miss Foreman, uh, uh, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Yes, thank you so much, Katie. And thank you, everyone for being here and for all the work that you do. Um, I was invited, uh, my name is Julia Foreman. I'm a city council candidate running in District 26, which covers Western Queens. So Long Island City, Sunnyside, Woodside, uh, Dutch Kills, and the bottom of Astoria. Who's um, the bottom in person? Just if people- Right now it is council member Jimmy Van Bramer, um, who is termed out. So it will be an open seat, it's, uh, very exciting, um, to potentially be the first woman to represent this district, which Unfortunately, I, I'm sure Shahana can agree with me, is one of those things that is a little too common for women to be able to say who are running, that we'd be the first, we'd be the first. Um, I was invited here today by Melissa Bear, who has been an amazing friend and a source of like great information, uh, she's on the screen now, um, about maternal health care, especially in our district, and, and the fact that it's so lacking. Um, as I said earlier, District 26 does not have a hospital. Um, and the hospital closest to us in District 22 does not have a labor and delivery department. Um, there is a very, very small choice of where to go. It's essentially you're going to Elmhurst Hospital deeper in Queens or you're going over the bridge. Um, District 26 is also home to the largest public housing development in the Western Hemisphere, Queens Bridge Houses. Um, and that is another thing that means a lot to me. And, and there are some of you on the Zoom that I think I've seen at other Zooms, you know, and rallies, especially when it comes to the legislation surrounding the maternal mortality rates and um, the legislation that city council has passed in those regards. Um, and I've, I've really tried to learn from all of you as much as humanly possible in that regard and hopefully will continue to do so. Um, one thing that I think is really actionable on a city level um, and that maybe everyone can, I, if you don't know more, perhaps we can share more information, is the New York City Care Program. What that is, is it provides no to low cost coverage. It's not really insurance, but really it's, it's what you get charged if you go to a public city hospital. It's an amazing opportunity for people who are extremely low to low income. However, as I said, District 26 doesn't have a hospital, let alone a public hospital. And the number of public hospitals in Queens has been declining for a, over a decade. Um, so that's something that in the council, I'm deeply dedicated to investing in. We need to invest in expanding our public hospital system, be it an actual hospital or some sort of outpatient emergent care center, something where we can work in um, reproductive health in a way that is accessible to people who may not be able to be insured, who don't have insurance, who can't afford insurance. We need to make sure that all of this is accessible because that's really how we're going to make a difference when it comes to the maternal mortality rates and when it comes to people giving birth in a place that is safe, 
that is catering to their needs and that is accepting of the fact that we do have an incredibly strong doula and midwifery community in New York City that people do need access to. Um, I, I also join you know, all of you in, in pushing our state legislators for the New York Health Act and our federal legislators for Medicare for all. But until we get that, we do have something really great in New York City. We just need to expand our hospital system so that more people actually have access to using it. Um, just a little bit, of, I don't wanna take up too, too much time. So just a little bit about me in general. One of the big reasons I'm running, especially now that we are hopefully about to enter the post COVID recovery time is I wanna make sure that New York City's budget is dedicating every dollar and every resource it has to doing what's best for us in our communities. And what I mean by that is investing in our schools and our small businesses, but especially in the services that people are relying on right now to survive. Um, I wanna do everything we can so us and our neighbors can get to a better place than what was considered our normal pre-COVID. Um, and if, I'll, I'll copy Shahana and put all my links in the chat next if anyone wants to get involved, if anyone wants to talk more. And I do hope to continue this conversation because this has been so far the best Zoom I've been on in a while. The grounding exercise was just like, I needed that. Um, and I wish every Zoom started with that. And I, I thank you all for welcoming me into this space with you. And I, I look forward to learning more from you uh, in the future. So thank you so much. Thank, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, the grounding exercise, all Nicole's idea. She's like, I think we should have a grounding exercise. And I was like, please, thank you. Yes, you are right. Um, are there any other city council candidates in the Zoom that uh, that want to introduce themselves? Great. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you both, uh, Ms. Foreman and Ms. Hani, for joining us. Uh, if you live in and near their districts, go uh, learn more about them, learn more about the other candidates, get involved in a campaign. Um, and if you don't live in New York City, ask yourself, what is happening? What is the, an what is the analogous thing happening in my area? Uh, do I have a city hall? Is there a town council? What is the local government representing me? And what are they doing for birthing people right now? Um, uh, well, we, uh, yeah, ask yourself those questions, do and let us know so that when we connect folks to you in your district later on, as we continue to grow, you're able to loop them in and help them understand essentially uh, all the things we're doing in New York City, what that would look like in your geographical area. Um, so let me reshare the, the screen. Uh, any questions before we go or while we're here? Cool. So I'm going to reshare my screen and we'll keep chatting about some other stuff. Um, the Momnibus Act. I don't, is Lisa Young in the Zoom to give us an update generally on the Momnibus? I didn't see Lisa. Um, so generally the Momnibus is a piece of federal legislation. So this is a national bill uh, that covers every state in the country um, and that will be passed in Washington. So to get the Momnibus passed, you are not calling your state senator or state assembly person, you are calling your federal congressional representative. Um, so that's pro if you know the name of any of your electeds, that's probably the name that you know is your congressperson because uh, they're at the national level. Usually they have more attention, more press coverage. Um, my representative is Hakeem Jeffries, who is uh, a, kind, a high ranking congressperson uh, in the House. Um, so it is Jeffries who, Jeffries is not yet on this bill, and I am working with people in my district to be calling him and try and get his attention and get him on this. Um, but it is, a, uh, an omnibus is uh, like when legislators take a bunch of small bills that are related to one another and they put it together in a package. Uh, that's an omnibus. So essentially, instead of having to pass, like vote and pass each bill individually, they vote and pass on the package of bills because they're all very related. So the Momnibus is a play on words uh, because it is an omnibus bill with it 
had nine last session. I think it has 12 bills this session that are all related to maternal health. They improve data collection and uh, biggest and most importantly is it puts a lot of grant money aside uh, specifically for uh, community organizations that are led by the people most affected by the issue they are trying to address. Um, and uh, yeah, it puts aside a lot of grant money for those organizations to do the work that they are doing now, but better. Uh, so one of the main reasons why Movement to Birth Liberation is excited about and supporting um, the and supporting the Momnibus is because hopefully when it passes, the birthing place will be able to get grant money uh, and use grant money as like the primary source to pay for the physical location of the birth center that they want to open. Uh, Bronx Rebirth would qualify for grant money and be able to expand the programming they're offering. Um, so it is a pretty non-controversial bill. It's by, you know, there's uh, not nothing in it uh, that reasonable people would object to. Uh, it really just, you know, collect, improves data collection and puts money aside for community groups. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so we are working on getting this passed. And just today, a group of folks met with Representative Espiat to ask for his support on this bill. Um, is there anyone from that group that wants to introduce themselves and give us an update on how that went? Uh, no, they must have left already. J Janice, were you there? Any chance you want to update? Yeah, that? I was just going to say, I definitely was there. Um, yeah. It feels like so much time has passed since the meet. <laughs> um, so we didn't meet with uh, the representative. We met with a health policy advisor. Um, and we all went around to introduce ourselves. And basically, we asked, can we get um, SBS, um support? And he said he think he can. He's going to read up some more, but we expect to get um, um, his support as a co-sponsor in the bill. Um, and yeah, it was a, we're just keeping our fingers crossed. We're going to keep in touch with the office. And if they, if they have any questions, you know, we'll be open to answer their questions and to have another meeting if, um, if needed. Awesome. Thank you, Janice, for, for updating us. Um, yeah, so the the SBAT team came together through the database. It, we just, you know, looked at everybody in that district and emailed them and said, "Hi, he's not uh, he's not a co-sponsor yet, and we'd like to get his support." Um, and we wanted to meet with SBAT and uh, like actually sit down with his office because uh, Mila from the birthing place is a constituent, and we want to form a good relationship so that once we hopefully once it passes and all that grant money is out there, we have uh, relationships with the Congress people to help us get that grant money to where it should go. Um, so we wanted to meet with him and start forming that relationship. So it was. Uh, super cool for me as an organizer to see all of the emails setting the meeting up and happening and not have to do anything because everyone in that district uh, has been involved uh, and been going to meetings for a while and knew what to do. Um, and we are excited for, you know, uh, probably it's always going to, we're always going to get back from legislators and probably we want to always hear back from legislators who are hearing about legislation for the first time thank you so much, let me look into this a little bit more and I'll get back to you because we want that, you know, hopefully we don't want another group to be meeting with them and ask them to sign on bad legislation and them to agree within the context of a meeting. We'd want them to do their due diligence and look it up. Um, so it's totally fine for legislators to say, give me time to look into it. And then it's kind of on, on both of our ends to keep the pressure up so that it's a true, we're looking into this and making sure it's good legislation and not a stall tactic. Um, and make sure that we get their support going forward. Um, so, uh, so thank you so much, Janice, for sharing. Um, and let me, sorry. Uh, so last, um, 
last month we had the Momnibus Working Group, and it's really just where we take an hour to answer folks' questions and help plug people in to um, other folks in their districts. Uh, keep your eyes out for, we'll be scheduling another Momnibus Working Group for uh, March. And I, we would look up the text of the Momnibus and see if your person is or uh, isn't on it yet, but we don't have, uh, as at least a couple days ago, I actually didn't look today, uh, the new version of the Momnibus for this session wasn't findable on the internet yet. So any day now, we should have the 2021-2022 version of the Momnibus up there. And then you can check to see if your representative is a co-sponsor. Um, and in the meantime, if you look at the old bill, you can see where they signed on, were they not. Usually if they were signed on before, they'll uh, sign on to the new one. Um, any questions on that or, or about the Momnibus or how to get more involved? Hi, I just want to, sorry to jump in. Um, both me and Melissa found it. Oh, um, okay. so put it in the chat. Fabulous. Uh, so yeah, so uh, keep your, we'll check it out now and we'll put it in the follow-up link. And now everybody knows how to look. Oh, uh, you know what? Let me, sorry. Uh, if we do have it, we'll just look it up now because the, the federal website looks a little different than the state one. So here, if you want to find out if your person's a co-sponsor, um, you're going to look, when you Google the the bill, it's going to be at congress.gov. You're checking here to make sure it's in the right legislative term. And then here we have a summary of the bill, the actual text of the bill, and here are the co-sponsors. We go down to the side and it shows us, you know, everyone here. And then if you want to find your state, you can click on New York, and now we can see, oh, it worked. Rapper Jeffries is on this bill. He wasn't on the old version. He is on this version. Maybe our calls worked. That's great to see. Um, who else? Oh, I didn't, Jamal Bowman wasn't on this before. Well, he's brand new to Congress, but it's great to see that he got on this early. Um, yeah, still no SBA though, so we will be working on that going forward. Uh, any other questions on the Momnibus? Grace, are you in the Zoom? Uh, still, Grace. Uh, Grace was at the Momnibus Working Group and wrote a great letter to her representative. Hey, I'm right here. You just want to say hi, so uh, and so other folks in your district know know who you are. <laughs> well, good evening, everyone. Actually, good night. Uh, my name is Grace, and I am. A.M. Reyes constituent, Serrano as well, he's my uh, congressperson. Um, I essentially just emailed these people um, asking them, you know, I would like to get to know you and I want you to get to know me. This is where I live and these are the things that are important to me and why they're important. And then I gave them the bill numbers so that they don't have to scramble looking for them. And I asked them their opinion, you know, how do you feel about it? You know, where do you stand? Um, A.M. Reyes was awesome. She, her people got back to me and um, we scheduled an appointment. We sat down. Um, even though she was in Albany, she took the time to actually sit with me in a Zoom and it was a wonderful conversation. Um, she took real, you know, her time with me and um, we just got to know each other. Um, it was great to finally, you know, hear her voice. You know, you will see them always in social media and this and the other, but it's different when it's you and them. Mm -hmm. um, I've yet to get Serrano to reply. Um, I sent him an email. Then I sent him a follow email saying, hey, what's up? You know, I sent you an email before. What's going on? I haven't heard from you. And since that didn't work, I went on Twitter and I said, hey, what's up, man? I send you, you know, two emails. I still haven't heard from you. And of course, I haven't heard from the tweet either. Um, I understand, you know, they're very busy. So we'll see what happens. But um, I also sent an email to the other three people who are in, you know, in my um, um, pod. Um, I only received one reply back from one person, which is fine. Hopefully the other two decide to jump back in. If not, it's okay. It's just me and we just keep it going. We're building relationships, letting them know what's going on so that they're aware that there are people who are actually paying attention. And I think that's the part that makes a big difference. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing, Grace. Um, 
yeah, uh, the the back to the back to the form I mentioned a bunch, but please fill out the form if your friend if your friends uh, aren't here uh, but would be interested in this type of work, have them fill out the form. Uh, the best way to get a pod going and active is to get it bigger. Um, so that way, when we email them, there are more people who are in a place in their life to be able to read and respond and get involved. Um, Grace, was there anything else you like learned during this process that you're like, ooh, I don't know, I didn't know that before, and that would be helpful for other people to know? Um, I mean, not really. <laughs> I mean, just from A.M. Reyes, she was pretty straightforward. Um, I haven't heard from, from Serrano, so I really don't know what his mm -hmm. personality is like or whatever it's like yet, so nothing just yet. It's just, you know, it's good to be able to reach out. Well, thank you so much for sharing and for, uh, I'm so glad that uh, Assembly Member Reyes is one of the three registered nurses uh, in the New York State Assembly. Um, so it's great that someone in the movement now has her ear and a relationship with her. Um, yeah, thank you for, sh thank you for sharing and hopefully we'll get, uh, if uh, lots of people get their state senator and their Congress person confused. For some people in the Bronx, it is super well warranted because there is a state senator, Jose Rivera, and a federal Congress person, Jose Rivera. And I honestly forget which the their middle initials are different, but I forget which one's which, and I don't want to mess it up in public. Uh, so just if if you're seeing Serrano, just double check and make sure it's the you're not the it's the state senator or the Congress person you're talking to the right Serrano. Um, someone texted me also the MyGov NYC, um, they haven't updated their photos of assembly people uh, who are brand new. So if you have a brand new assembly person, it may still have your old, like your old person's information. Um, so just if you're like, this doesn't look right, just Google it and uh, you'll find the right thing and hopefully uh, the MyGov NYC will get updated soon. Um, great. So, um, we're gonna, everything's all a jumble, but we're back to talk about state issues and most, like most of the issues we're working on right now, we are working on in the context of working groups. Um, the working groups that we currently have within the movement really reflect the capacity of people who aren't me in the movement to help me lead them. Um, and other like and things that other people have been interested in pursuing. So Lisa, uh, Lisa Young, who's been helping me put together the Momnibus working group, like she really wanted to work on the Momnibus. Cool, go for it. Um, on that note, uh, a, a working group that we'd like to see come together or that is coming together is for lactation consultants. And I wanted to throw to Jada um, for a couple of minutes to introduce herself and chat about the lactation working group. All right. Am I unmuted? Yes. Okay. So hi, everybody. I'm Jada Shapiro. She, her. I'm the founder of Uber and Birthday Presents, and I've been working here with Katie on New York Health Act, but um, I'm particularly interested in starting, she and I have been talking about starting a lactation working group specifically. Um, so I'm going to put up a little poll to see if anybody would like to get involved with that so that we can address all of the um, disparities here in lactation resourcing and access um, and the fact that insurance is supposed to cover lactation counseling. That, and, and I should, I want to clarify, um, that this is not just for lactation consultants. I am a lactation counselor, not a consultant. So I just want to be clear, anybody interested in lactation at all, um, because it is all very clearly related uh, to the birth and postpartum um, experience. And also to me seems one of the simplest ways we can start to reduce some of the health disparities we see in long term would be if we can support people early on with their lactation process. And we know that our, our hospitals and um, are, are not set up and not supportive of doing this. There are many ways we could easily solve these problems. I'd love to look at some of the legislative you know, options that we have, knowing that the Affordable Care Act does require um, lactation support to be fully covered, but 
obviously the way it's set up right now requires a lot of people to have to be able to pay cash first, which basically wipes out a whole um, segment of people who cannot pay and should not have to pay out of pocket to get their lactation support. And I think one of the things Uber is set up to do is to match people quickly to lactation support, but we'd like to start organizing and connecting so that we can make sure that we are matching people who can't just cash pay. We do a lot of um, behind the scenes work to do that with people who can't afford it. And we um, work in many different ways, but nothing that we've done yet formally um, in terms of a program. So we've started a fund that we've been collecting for, which is going to support both that and also um, be supportive of people being able to come to the lactation counselor training that we run so that it'll be, a, it, it is right now, we have many pay what you can spaces that we run um, to the best that we can, but we're hoping that this fund is going to support more people of color to be able to take the lactation counselor training, the 45 hour training um, without having to pay for it themselves so that they can support um, within their community. So that's something that I'm working toward, but also really would like to have a group and I don't need to be the leader of this at all in any way. Like I'm just launching it out there and would love anybody um, who wants to be involved to be able to start looking at what type of legislation could we uh, look at presenting? What can the city do? What can our hospitals do? We know that the amount of lactation consultants hired is extremely low for the amount of people birthing. We know that the NICUs are um, a Katie can speak more to the NICU experience, but for me, supporting people who've been in the NICU, um, it's really, really a challenge and people can't be, there, there's so much that we need to do. And I think, you know, in terms of getting donor breast milk, et cetera. So anybody who would like to join, um, I put a little doodle poll. And also you, if you can't do any of those dates, just email me um, that you're interested in being in a lactation working group. Katie will also maybe put it out in whatever thing she sends out. And cool. Um, and I would look forward very much to starting to work on this together. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Jada, for sharing and for being willing to kind of be the point person uh, to start organizing the lactation consultants throughout the state. Um, so yeah, so fill out that doodle poll. The Jada and I were speaking earlier, like the first meeting is essentially just getting to know one another as people who have an interest uh, um, in advancing lactation related issues, sharing from each other's lived experiences and per professional experiences, what are the problems we need to be working on, and who who isn't at the Zoom that we should be looping in, who are the stakeholders that we wanna make sure that we are talking to throughout this process so that their voices are centered in the legislation that we write. Um, so Jada is just kind of helping with scheduling and bringing all of those people together. And what comes of that will just depend on who shows up. So please, please uh, get involved. If you have friends that are in the lactation world who aren't here tonight, let them know that this is going on. And uh, like right now, we can't say like spot, you know, if we want to improve lactation in New York, sponsor this bill because we, we don't have any bills right now uh, that focus on that issue. Uh, the best people to write those bills are folks who are working in the lactation business or who are lactating themselves or recently lactating um, and have insight into it. So hopefully this is a space where, again, we can kind of crowdsource uh, 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 crowdsource legislation that will meet the needs that we know exist and that are out there. Um, so. Guys, we made it two hours this week because we were always running late when it was an hour and a half. And I've loved not feeling rushed and I'm seeing we have 10 minutes left and I promise you we're actually gonna get out of here at nine o'clock and this was great. So I'll just kind of uh, go, go quickly through our next two points. But most of what I was going to say is come uh, watch out for the working group and or teach in on these issues to learn more. Uh, so the New York Health Act is out there. Um, the Throughout the fall, uh, we had a series of teach ins um, that led to a series of working groups that led to a, a list of recommendations that we brought to Assembly Member Gottfried and Senator Rivera um of how to improve the language of the new york health act for birthing people and to make it a stronger bill for from a reproductive justice standpoint and i 
uh, over half of the recommendations and suggestions that we brought to them uh, have been incorporated into the text of the bill that is being introduced this year. So we are very excited and I am regularly refreshing my screen to see uh, when um, when the, the, the current version of the New York Health Act comes out. Um, so we're going to have a teach-in probably this month where we go through what were the recommendations we made, which of them have been incorporated, which of them do we still want to organize towards uh, in next year or the coming years. But essentially from now until June, uh, New York's legislative session, like when we can vote on bills is only half a year. Uh, in Washington, they can vote on years on bills year round. In New York, it's just January to June. So from now until June, we're going to be putting most of our focus and our emphasis in just trying to get the New York Health Act passed. Um, there is a two year implementation phase for the New York Health Act. So all of the changes we weren't able to get in this year, uh, if we get it passed this year, we have two years to kind of figure it out and um, get it changed during the implementation process. And if we don't get it passed this year, we have a whole nother year to bring back more recommendations and, and improve that bill. Uh, so keep your eyes out for that teaching. And then um, a lot of, you know, as birth worker, like as birth workers and reproductive justice activists, we don't need to recreate the, we don't need to recreate the wheel or, uh, um, and we should be building coalitions with folks in other activists group. So please follow the campaign for New York Health, go to their website, sign up for their updates. Um, I essentially like I rarely forward things from the campaign to my listserv because I so regularly tell everyone on my listserv to sign up for campaign emails. So I'm just hoping that everybody in the movement who lives in New York is also getting emails from straight from the campaign for New York Health and getting uh, clued into events that way. And then uh, last thing I'll have to say of this is if you have been learning about the New York Health Act and ex are excited about state level single payer, but are sad because you live in California, but not New York, uh, great news for you. They just came out with the New York Health Act for California and it's called CalCare. And it would similarly create a state level universal health care program in California. So if you have friends in California, if you live in California, um, hopefully the movement's next step or like the next state we grow in is we essentially help our birth worker friends in California learn how to help improve and advance their single payer bill the same way we've been working on over here in New York. Um, just uh, these maps show if the if you see that you live in a red or yellow area of the state, we do not yet have the support of your state senator. And so we will need your help in getting this bill passed. Uh, if you have friends on Long Island or in upstate New York, please, please, please let them clue them, you know, ask them, have you heard about the New York Health Act? Uh, and clue them into what is going on there um, and help them get involved. And then lastly, as I mentioned before, uh, Bruce and I are working on uh, legislation and essentially the premise of the legislation that we are working on is to create a bill that would pay reparations to families who have lost, um, who have lost a member due to pregnancy related causes. We know that over 60% of pregnancy related deaths in America are preventable and so the law essentially says like seeing as most like seeing as more likely or not than not a uh, pregnancy related death is preventable we should just be supporting all families who've experienced a pregnancy related death financially um so we don't put the burden on them to have to like meet their basic needs through gofundme and malpractice suits which is the current landscape um so kind of a part of our strategy and uh, so the first time I told uh, a legislator that I thought we should be paying reparations to families of people who had died preventably, uh, Senator, this was, I told Senator Rivera this when I was a baby activist, and he was like, cool, do you know that Black people have been trying to get reparations for slavery, and that hasn't gone anywhere? And I was like, right, good point duly noted. Uh, so this uh, right on your screen is 
uh, the state level bill that would initiate a process of reparations for New York's participation in slavery and segregation. And so as we are doing, as we are like uh, putting together new legislation and working on writing a, a bill for future reparations uh, about things that are happening right now, we recognize, oh, we also need to pass the bill to pay reparations for things that have happened in the past. Um, so everyone has looked up their state senator, um, uh, sorry, not their state senator, their state assembly person, because this bill is in the assembly right now, not the Senate. Uh, so go ahead and check this list of state assembly people and see is my assembly member on here and if not uh i would love to see you when we uh keep your eyes out for the reparations working group slash let me know if you want to help me head that up because essentially the delay in me starting that working group is i need a point person if in case i get sick to um you know or in case i can't come for whatever reason to take over um so I mean, anybody who's interested in reparations can definitely get involved. I guess strategically it would make the most sense if you also need to get your assembly person on that bill. Uh, so hit me up um, if that describes you. So if you are, as we wind down, if you are left with questions, if you are confused about what to do next or what the most, you know, what this best uh, next step is for you strategically, uh, this is just to remind you, it is a movement, not a moment. So like, we're not gonna get all your answers, questions answered in any one Zoom. Um, we're not gonna like do anything that we ever want to do at all one meeting. So come back, uh, come keep coming to our stuff, keep uh, chatting with other people in the movement and hopefully that stuff will get cleared up with time. Um, and then to end us, uh, an, another book that I've been reading um, that's been informing uh, both my own anti-racism journey and how I organize is My Grandmother's Hands. Um, and that talks about uh, a lot about how we heal from uh, white supremacy and white bodied supremacy. Um, and it recommends people hum together uh, as just a way to uh, sell each other and create community. And so uh, as we say goodbye to one another tonight, uh, I would want uh, invite everyone to unmute themselves and we're gonna hum happy birthday twice. Uh, and just as a recognition for all the babies that were born last month and that are going to be born next month, that those the babies are the reason why we're all doing this and why we got into birth work. Um, and uh, if anybody had a birthday or has a birthday coming up, this is for you as well to celebrate your special day. And uh, yeah, we'll hum happy birthday together. I'll hang out for a couple minutes um, on the Zoom to debrief with core people. Uh, and if you have any questions, feel free to stay on. Uh, but after, after the happy birthday, feel free to leave. And thank you so much for joining us all tonight. Um, so with that, well, I guess I'll, I'll start singing happy birthday or start humming happy birthday. timing but thank you all so much for joining and i hope you all have a great night and to see you in april bye thank you thank you katie thank you thanks katie